Well, good morning. It is good to see you. The scripture says we're to enter his house with praise. And what a joy to be able to know that we are blessed, that we can come to the house of the Lord and we can praise and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And uh, this coming Tuesday, 7 o'clock, we're meeting. We're going to have a Thanksgiving service, so we want to invite you to come and be a part of that. Again, that's Tuesday, 7 o'clock. And we'll just come together and worship the Lord together. And we're looking forward to a good time in the Lord that night. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. Deacons need to see you for a few minutes after service and also the finance committee. So if uh, y'all want to meet on one side, one on the other. Okay. Well, welcome. It is good to be in God's house. We want to welcome you today. Thank you for coming and being a part of our service. Pray the Lord will speak to you today he'll encourage you uh with flowers today are in honor of vera creed uh 29th birthday that's what i thought well happy birthday what a celebration god bless you vera we love you and thank the lord for you okay mike will you lead us in prayer please Our most gracious Heavenly Father, be with us today as we come into your house to listen to Pastor Scott as he gives us a message that was laid upon his heart by you. Be with all the shut-ins, everybody in the military, be especially with the families from the UVA tragedy this week. Uh, be, with, be with everybody that needs your love, support, that's millions and millions of people in this world. And as we pray, we want to thank you for all the time of Thanksgiving coming forward to us in this future week. And be there for everybody to have a safe and a happy travels for Thanksgiving. In your name we pray. Amen. Good to see everyone today. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 43. All hail the power of Jesus' name. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4.
Yes, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come today, and I pray that you'd help each one of us to be able to say it as well as my son. Lord, we ask you to take these tithes and offerings and use them to do your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Take your Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Revelation, please. We're continuing our study on things to come, and we've looked at uh, several different themes. We've looked at the rapture, we've looked at heaven, we've looked at uh, Hades and hell and the lake of fire, and last week we looked at the beam of judgment of Christ. And this morning we are going to a wedding. You ever been to a wedding before? One of the Wonderful things that we can do in life is to see the joy and happiness when two are joined together. Revelation chapter number 19, beginning in verse number 1. I'm going to ask if you will please to stand for the reading of God's word. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, and her smoke rose up forever and forever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both great and small. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, at the voice of the many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunder, and saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife hath made, ready, made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of the brethren, they that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Father, we pray that you will speak to us today. Lord, I pray that you'd encourage us in your word. And Lord, help us to look forward to the things that will come quickly. Lord, we ask these things now. In the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. There are things in God's word that for me are almost unexplainable. I wish I had the words of a scholar to try to proclaim all the things that we see in this passage this morning. We start in heaven and we start with the ones who are worshiping. I want you to think about wedding bells in heaven. Wedding bells in heaven. Have you ever been to a wedding? I've been to many and since I've been a pastor, and most of them have gone pretty well. Uh, as one person said, I've never seen an ugly bride. I've seen some that came close, but I've never seen an ugly bride. But here in heaven, there's some things that are going to take place. You, you think about weddings and something that just is... It's hard to explain. Remember when Princess Diana was married? And I think I read where they spent $110 million on a wedding. That's crazy, isn't it? But it was magnificent. But you ain't seen nothing yet that's going to compare with 
the wedding that will take place one day in heaven. That's what John tries to share with us this morning about what's going to take place. And let me just set the scene for you because it helps us to understand what is going on. The church has been raptured in Revelation chapter 4. From chapter 5 on, you find the tribulation period where God's saints are martyred. All kind of rebellion takes place upon the earth. There's death, famine, you name it. All these things are going on in the earth. And then when you get to the last chapters in 17 and 18, you find, first of all, religious Babylon, and that is the false church that's going to rise up during the tribulation period. And then you're also going to find in chapter 18, you're going to find religious, or not only religious, but commercial Babylon. And from the very start in the book of Genesis, Babylon was opposed to everything that God stood for. And so in chapter 19, you began to hear, first of all, this manifestation of praise from heaven because of what has taken place. And you hear this phrase, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Four times you you see this in this passage that we're looking at. So there's a time of great worship. There's a time of great praise because God's people are celebrating because Jesus is getting ready to come to the earth. But first, there are wedding bells in heaven. First, Things have got to get ready there. So look at verse number one for just a moment. And notice, first of all, this manifestation of praise. And after these things, I heard a great voice and much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and honor, and power unto the Lord our God. The first thing that they praise God for is the redemption of the saints. Have you ever just thought about how great salvation is? You know, sometimes after we get a little bit of age on us and we've been saved for a while, we forget the wonder of it all. We forget the wonder of our salvation and the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his heart or gave his blood for you and I that we might have life and life everlasting. Here are the saints, and they're in heaven, and their their eyes have been opened in a way that they've never seen before. Because when, folks, when you get to heaven, you're going to be able to see things you've never seen before. You're going to be able to see the manifestation of God in such a way that you couldn't even imagine right here now. So you, you first begin to see this. There's this big aspect of praise. Why? Because they're praising God. They're saying, hallelujah, God, thank you for the salvation that you gave to me. Go back and remember the time when you gave your heart and your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back to the time when you surrendered your life to him and the the peace of God and the joy of God came in your heart, in your life, and your, your life was just overflowing with praise and thanksgiving and honor. Why? Because you realized that God had saved you from the clutches of hell. Folks, if that's not a reason to say hallelujah for, I don't know. But see, here's the saints, and what are they doing? They're saying hallelujah. God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you have done in our hearts and in our lives. But then he also, they also say, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah because your judgments, you have judged Babylon, the one who has corrupted this earth. In other words, they were thanking God because now they are 
have seen the destruction of commercial and religious Babylon. And what they are saying is, God, you are true and you're righteous because you have judged them. And they're saying, hallelujah. Thank God because God's word always comes true. He said, they said, thank you, God. Hallelujah. Because now the ones who have been against you, they have been judged because of their sin and their wickedness. And now God is going to judge them. And there's a celebration in heaven. Have you ever said, I'm looking forward to the time when there'll be no sin on this earth? This earth? Have you ever thought about the time when you go to heaven and you won't have to deal with all the rottenness, the murders, the rapes, all these things that happen in our world today? Isn't that going to be a great time to be with God? And aren't you going to be thankful that those who are guilty of all those things, that God's going to judge those people? See, that's what the scripture says. There's this manifestation of praise because the people who have chosen to reject God, they are going to get and receive exactly what they deserve. And the people of God, because they have been saved, because they are righteous, they're going to see through righteous eyes in a way that God sees, and they're going to say they deserve exactly what they are getting. And so there's this hallelujah chorus in, in heaven. I uh, came in this morning, I said, talked to Nathan and told him, I said, got something for you guys. He said, what's that? I said, how about doing hallelujah chorus this morning? <laughs> now, I knew they couldn't do it, but I, I just, but this, this hallelujah chorus, uh, and I know you've all heard it, but think about how it's going to be when heaven does it, folks. I mean, aren't we blessed with music here? I mean, folks, we are so blessed. But take it to the millionth degree when we get to heaven. That's how it's going to be. And there's this, this praise and this worship because of what has taken place. The reward of sin, the, the realization of the greatness of God. Look what it says here. And the four and twenty beasts uh, fell and worshiped God, saying, Amen, hallelujah. And I heard a voice out of, out of the throne saying, Praise God for all ye his servants. Because they realize the greatness of God. I, I was reading, I was looking at a passage right as the choir was singing. I probably shouldn't have done that, but Sometimes God just reminds me of, of a verse. And I was reading in, in Exodus chapter 9 where they're in the midst of the plagues. And God says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for this purpose so that my name may be known in all the world. Folks, if you begin with creation and you begin in Genesis and you follow the pattern and the plan of God, what God is trying to do through his people, he did it through Israel, or tried to do it through Israel, through the church, is to make his name known throughout all the world so that the people of God can rejoice in who he is. In who he is. Because of who he is and what he has done. See, that's the purpose. That's the plan of Almighty God. And here are the saints of God and they're going, Hallelujah! Because we see the greatness of God. We see the plan of God. And, and now it's coming to an end. All that God had planned throughout all of eternity for his people, for his church, now it's coming and they also praise him because 
he is now going to reign. Look in verse 6, and they heard it as it were the voice of a great multitude, the voice of many waters as the voice of mighty thunder, and saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Isn't it wonderful to know, folks, that one day he is going to rule everything. Now, the leaders of this world think that they're running things now. But if you look and you understand what the Bible says, everything that's going on is in the providence of God because God's got a plan. They're not in charge. They think they are. But the Bible says that God takes the hearts of the rulers and he changes them and he turns them whichever way God wants them to go. Listen, all the things that are happening in the world, don't think God doesn't understand what's going on. If you think that, you're, fu you're foolish. God knows everything that's going on. And everything that's taking place is moving toward the plan of Almighty God. And these ones in heaven, they are just saying hallelujah because the Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful one, reigneth. Now, folks, that's just the first part. I ain't even got, hadn't even got to the wedding yet. They're, they're just praising God, listening to music, worshiping. That's all they're doing so far. They're just getting ready. Getting ready for the good stuff. Then he says, let us rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. Book of Ephesians chapter 5 says this concerning the church. Now in this passage he's talking about the relationship with husbands and wives and he says to them, husbands, you're to love your wife as Jesus loved the church. And he gave himself for it. Then he says these words. That he might sanctify, set it apart, and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, purpose that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's what God is doing in the church. Because there's coming a marriage of the Lamb. Someone said it like this, that the rapture was to catch us up, the beam of seed of God that we looked at last week, that was to clean us up, and the marriage supper is to cheer us up. See, God has a plan for you and I. Now, the church is called the bride of Christ. The church, not Israel, don't get the two confused. When he says the church, he's talking about those when the, on the day of Pentecost when the church was birthed until chapter 19. That's what he's speaking of. Now in the Old Testament, Israel was known as the wife, but because of their unfaithfulness, God divorced her. Now he's not through with Israel. But at that time, he, he's divorced her. So now when you come to this passage, you find where the bride has made herself ready. The garments have been cleansed. So what are we seeing? Remember last week when we talked about the Bema seat of Christ? where God, we were going to go before God. Every child of God would go before him and 
they would get the things done in their body, the whatever kind of works they had done, if they were wood, hay, or stubble, they would be burned. But if they were the, the righteous acts, then they would be rewarded. Gold, silver, precious stones. Well, this is where this comes in at. Because now it says here in, uh, in chapter 19 that the bride is ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. He says uh, the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. There were garments. Someone said it, it's like this. There's several kinds of righteousness. There's first of all, there's personal righteousness. Now that's who we are. That's the person without God. And the Bible says this about the person without God. That our righteousness is like filthy rags. That's not much righteousness, is it? But he says, here's what happens. When a person is saved, there is a righteousness that has been provided. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he, he hath made him, speaking of Jesus, to become sin who knew no sin in order that we might become the righteousness of God. See, that's what happened at Calvary. Calvary took our personal righteousness and it went through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and now we have become righteous not because of anything he has done or what we have done, but because Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin. And so now we have this provided righteousness that we have. That's part of the garment, but then there's also that which is practical. Now, he says here in Verse number 8, he says this, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in the fine linen, clean and white, for the white linen is, actually it reads, the righteous acts of the saints. That's the Bema seat, folks. That's where all the things were judged, and now the church is ready the church has upon it, when the church, I'm talking about those who are saved, you have the provided righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have that practical righteousness that those who have earned those, those different crowns, they are ready to present themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he says is, is going to happen here at the marriage of the Lamb. What a day that's going to be, folks. But see, the thing about it is in a regular wedding, who gets all the honor? The bride. If you're the groom... It's the bride. The bride is the star of the occasion. But you see, at this marriage, it's not going to be the bride. Because the bride is going to represent everything that the groom has done for her. See, that's the difference. And it's going to be a glorious wedding because at this time, the church and the Lord Jesus Christ 
are married together. See, that's the goal. That's where we're headed as a church. That one day we're going to be married to him. And the scripture says that we'll be holy and without blemish, without spot. What a day that's going to be. You think that might have been a cause for them to sing hallelujah? Hallelujah, thank God because of what's going to take place. And then he mentions the marriage supper of the Lamb. He says this, verse 9, And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto them, These are true sayings of God. That's all he says. What? Welcome to the marriage supper. It doesn't say anything about what's going to happen. It just says, welcome to the marriage supper. A lot of folks think that that's going to take place for a thousand years. But folks, we've had a lot of food here over the years since I've been here. Probably the biggest one was the homecoming. It's going to be nothing compared to what Jesus is going to prepare. But folks, the main thing is not so much the marriage supper, but it's going to be the groom. It's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be Him. And all the focus is going to be on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How do you describe him? How do you describe who he is and what he has done? Well, the scripture says about him, he's the Alpha and the Omega, that he is the author of life. He's the perfecter of our faith. He's the anointed one. He's the bread of life. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the chief shepherd. He is our hope. He is our life. He is the eternal God. He is the firstborn of all creation. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's the firstfruits. He's the head of the Every man, every body, every church, every power, every authority. He is the great I am. He is the eternal God. That's the one that we're going to be seeing. The light of the world. The exact representation of God. The way, the truth, the life. The Lord Jesus Christ in all of his splendor, in all of his glory, in all of his accolades, he will be there. And you know what will happen? We will fall and worship him as King of kings and Lord of lords. What a wedding day that's going to be, folks. What a day it's going to be. Aren't you glad that this isn't everything here? We've got so much to look forward to. The greatest thing to look forward to is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. Folks, we're looking for the groom. That's who we're looking for. The one who paid it all. The Lord Jesus Christ. In just a moment, we're going to have an imitation hymn. Do you know him today? I didn't ask. I'm not asking if you know the historical Jesus. Most everybody knows the historical Jesus. Most people know that he lived for 33 years and he died on the cross. Most people know that. But the question is, do you know him personally? Do do you... Do you know him in such a way that if you died tonight and you stood before God, 
Would he let you in? Would he say to you, come into my presence? And if he were to say to you, why should I let you in? What would you say? Would you say, well, I knew about you. Or I went to church. I I gave money. I was baptized. That's not going to cut it. See, the only thing that he's going to hear is this. Lord, I surrender to you one day because I realized I was a sinner. I realized I was lost. I realized that my righteousness was as filthy rags. And I realized there was nothing that I could do, nothing that I could say, no amount of work I could do, no price I could pay. The only thing I could do was to come to you and surrender and say, God, forgive me because I've sinned against a holy and righteous God and I surrendered to you on that day and I gave you my life and you came into my life and now I'm a different person. That's the only hope any of us have to get to heaven, folks. Because there was a time in our lives when we said yes to Jesus Christ. Not about a denomination, not about a church, not about traditions. It's about Jesus and what you have done with him or what you have not done. You've either said yes Or you've said no. There is no middle ground. Yes to Jesus or no. Because it will depend. That decision will be whether or not you're with the wedding bells in heaven or you'll be with the lost at the great white throne judgment. See, that's the choice that all of us have to make with Jesus. In just a moment, we're going to have an invitation hymn. I want to invite you today, if if you've never trusted him as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know if you died tonight, you'd go to heaven, the greatest thing you can do is get it settled to know that you know that you know that you're going to go to heaven. The scripture says, these things have I written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. See, you can know for certain when you die, that you're going to go to heaven. And it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you need to come this morning and say, I want to turn from my sin. I want to turn from my sin and turn to the Savior. I am trusting him today. Or maybe you're here this morning and you've already done that, but you've never been baptized. I want to invite you this morning. Maybe you need to come. And there may be other decisions. Maybe you're here and you're a member of another church, but you believe this is where God would have you to serve. I want to invite you this morning. So we stand and sing our invitation hymn. I invite you to come. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for our time together this morning. Father, you know every heart that's here today. Lord, you know every struggle. Lord, you can see in us because you are omniscient. You know every thought that we have. Lord, you know everything about us. So, Father, would you speak to us? Lord, would you draw people to yourself? And, Lord, I pray if there's one here today who's not saved, God, would you speak to them? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, would you convict them of sin? And, Lord, save them today. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Our invitation hymn is 482.
services, Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Also, uh, deacons down here, finance committee over here, okay? And let's pray and thank the Lord for our time together today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our time together in your word. Lord, we thank you for each and every person that's here this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to speak to each and every heart. Lord, we thank you and we praise you now. In the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. 